Hey guys, so I wanted to go over one of the coolest short stories that I've read recently. This is my second time reading it, but this will be my first review on the channel. This is The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson. This is in the Arcanium Unbounded um, collection. And um, I'm trying to go through it, read all the stories that are in here. Um, currently in the middle of Mistborn Secret History as well. And um, just started uh, Sixth of Dusk. Um, which is the uh, one planet where there actually isn't a shard. I'll, uh, if you have questions about shards, I, I did a video explaining it. Um, kind of that's the, the where the magic comes from with all of Brandon Sanderson's world. So the Emperor's Soul is based on the Elantris world cell, but you don't have to read Elantris to get it or understand it. You really don't have to read anything else Sanderson to understand this. He explains the magic well. And it's about as standalone as you can get, but it's, a, a, it, oh man, it hits so, so hard. Um, so what I'll do is I'll do a quick spoiler-free section to say, hey, you should read this. And then I'm going to go into a couple thoughts that I had, because um, I was bawling like a baby with this one. And I really wanted to talk about it. Um, I cried the first time, and then um, it kind of unraveled some things for me this time going through it. And being that it's short, I think it's less than 100 pages. It's um, it's really, really fun to dig into where those emotions come from and, and what's going on there. Um, so to start out, spoiler-free idea, there's this um, woman who has a, a particular type of magic, and she gets captured by um, the government. Um, basically, the way their government's set up is there's an emperor, and then there's like his ring of advisors. And so the emperor is hurt and she has to heal him. So her type of magic is heresy for them. So for them to ask her, her to heal him with her magic is kind of heretical. So, and it's a process that will take um, a certain amount of days. Um, so that's about as unspoilery as I can get for you, but it's powerful, it packs a punch, and I would love for you guys to try this out. And if you haven't read it, I totally understand um, if you want to hop out now, because I don't want to spoil this for you. It's amazing. But there were some things I really, really, really wanted to talk about and um, do a spoiler section for this one, um, just because I just had such a great time. So from this point on, we're going to go into spoilers. And if you haven't read The Emperor's Soul, it's amazing. I know I barely talked about it here without the spoilers, but I don't want to ruin it for you. I went into it blind and I loved it. Um, I feel like even telling you that much is too much. So, all right. Um, if you want to subscribe and you, and you like the content, go ahead and do that. And then um, I'm going to go into spoilers right now. Okay, guys. So this is so powerful. And I think it's because it's the idea of creating something amazing, creating art. But in the same hand, like when she was doing it, I was connecting with her on her study of what... Um, went into, um, how, how do I explain, explain that? So to be a forger, which is her magic, you have to know what that thing was, where it came from, what the possibilities were for it. And then you can encourage it to be something slightly different. You could kind of rewrite its history, but you can't make it something new. Basically what you're doing is you're taking this thing and you're making it what it wants to be. You're giving it the opportunity to be the thing it wants to be. And um, that's the beauty of what she did for the Emperor. Like as her, um, as Shai and Galtonia were working through and talking and like her discussion for um, the painting where she tells, she's telling Galtonia um, her truth, right? She's being honest with him 100% of the time because that's the only way that he'll trust her. That's the only way that he'll give her the opportunity to escape. Um, and when she described like her, uh, her soul stamps personally, like her soul stamps, like how she was afraid and she had that secret soul stamp to um, basically wipe everything away. That was, that was super cool and super powerful. And I was so impressed with it. And then you, you went into um, where she had this whole moment um, where she could be a beggar, she could be a warrior. That was cool to see when you just kind of barely touched on it, but it was neat. Um, and then, um, as she was creating 
him. She got to know him. And like even at the end, she wanted to talk to him. She, she felt she knew him so much. And he didn't know her, but she knew him. And as she created him, his, she, she wrote his soul to be the person he wanted to be before he was bogged down by life, um, by allowing himself to enjoy fancy parties and not work for his people. And the small moments in his life that led him to be complacent, she changed that to give him what he wanted to be. And just the interplay between her and Galtonia was the same interplay that was between Galtonia and the Emperor. And because of who the Emperor had become, the Emperor was mad at Galtonia for who he was. And you could see the threads of their relationship being rebuilt because of him going back to who he used to be, the, the idealist, the um, emperor who wanted to care. And it was just so beautiful to see that. Like, I think I cried more as Galtonia was going through the notes and reading how she wrote his soul. And, and so he's reading and he's like, I wouldn't have ever picked up on these things. Even if I was a master forger, she did it so well. And, and he understood the beauty of the art of him he understood the beauty of her creating something amazing, creating this glorious thing that would forever and always be her creation. But not only was it her creation, it was the perfect version of the emperor himself that he wanted to be. And it was just so much fun to see that. And oh man, the story hit me so hard. I'm like sitting here with my Kindle at the computer, like bawling going, man, this is so good. This is so great. It really pulls at your heartstrings. It was cool to hear um, Sanderson's explanation of what he, uh, where he got the idea. He went to Thailand and they had these stamps. And so kings, what they could do is basically if they liked something, they'd walk up and they'd put their stamp on it. And um, he was saying that like one king like did it all the time. He would go up and he'd be like, oh, I love your painting. Let me put my stamp on it. And then he'd like write an ins a, a quote or a poem that he wrote. It, uh, he described it as like walking up to the Mona Lisa and being like, oh, I really like this. And putting your stamp on it and writing a poem in the center of the Mona Lisa. Um, and so that's where he got his idea. And I think that was really, really interesting and cool um, as he was traveling to Thailand and, and learning about their culture. Um, he incorporated that into... Um, his story. And I, I think that's really, really cool. You can, you can tell um, through the whole story, the Asian um, inspired culture that he, he used there. Um, he was a missionary in South Korea, I believe. And so he, he had the opportunity to kind of get to know those people for two years. And I think he really gave them that love that he thought they deserved. Um, the story is so powerful. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on the story as well. Um, I kind of talked to a couple, a couple of my friends that are big Sanderson fans and they love the story as well. Um, I'd love to get the Codex Cantina guys to break it down, like do a breakdown of the short story. Um, I might see if I can find it uh, on Kindle and send it to them, see what they say to that. I fell in love with this story and I wanted to share my thoughts of, on it with you guys. And um, I just, I had such a fun time. I really, really, really did. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.